Hello, and welcome to a very special joint online club meeting. I'll be giving a few hints and tips on how to use Zoom, if this is your first time using it. In the very bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see a microphone icon. If you are not speaking, please click on this to mute yourself so you do not disturb the speaker. Next, you'll have a stop video feed. If you need to get up from your computer or phone and use the restroom or get something to eat, just to click on this button so that your screen goes blank. And when you return, please share video because we love to see your like, lovely smiles. Then we have the chat feature. When you click this button, it opens the chat window where you can chat to the entire room or by clicking on the down arrow, you can choose a specific person, such as a speaker, and give them thoughts on what you, how their speech went. If you thought something was ver done very well, or something that you think that they can improve on, you can send them a note and, and say something to them in that encouraging way. Lastly, uh, is our policy that participating in this meeting that you agree that a recording will be available publicly on the YouTube channel, website, and other public media. At this time, I'll turn this over to the coordinator of this joint meeting, which is Aaron Long. Thank you very much, Doe. So, fellow Toastmasters and most distinguished guests, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Aaron. I'm the president of Compare Communicators. So, we do have a start for introduction for every single one that comes into this meeting. We will introduce our name, uh, where we are from, and one adjective that describe yourself. So we will start off with Mark. Would you like to start off first? Because you're on my top, head, top left hand corner. Sure thing. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Snow. I am from District 69 in Australia. And one thing that would me probably curious. Thank you very much. So we'll get around first. And next is that I would like to put Yumi up the stage. Yes, um, I'm Yumi. I'm currently living in Thailand. And I just did this script. I just joined the um, Five so I would say as long as it will be fresh. Fresh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Get around plus to me. Next, I would like to welcome Hakako Yamada. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Takako Yamada from Japan. I belong to uh, Diversity Toastmasters Club. And um, my daughter lives in Boston, so I hope uh, Lori will help her join Toastmasters Club. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next is Trisha. Hello, I'm Trish. I live near Gettysburg, Pennsylvania in the United States. And one adjective that would Describe me as busy. Back to you. And next, can I introduce you, Yukimasa? Uh, yes, hi, hello everyone. I'm Yukimasa from the Diversity Toastmasters Club. I will work as the grammarian today and then we'll give you the work of work, word of the day. And thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. And next, can I welcome Sunny? Hello, everybody. I am Sunny Fridge. I like to say I'm a New York girl living in a Mississippi world. And a word that can describe me would be optimistic. I like to see the glasses half full instead of half empty. Back to you, Mr. President. Oh, cool. Thank you. Next, we have Gayla. Hi. I'm Gail Thiessen. I'm Doug's wife. And I'm a guest, and I live in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, one word that describes me is detailed. Everyone always said when I give a grammarian report in my club, everyone always compliments me on how detailed I am. 
Thank you very much for our boss. And next will be Dawn. Hi. Oops. Hi. I'm Dawn and I am in Columbus, Ohio, just south of Gale and Doug. And I think the best word that describes me is intuitive. So I like to kind of feel that gut feeling and go with what I how I feel and that's me. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. And next can I have David up the stage? Hello. Hi. Oh, hi. So, so you, you can introduce yourself, David. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, I just uh, mute myself uh, by accident. Yeah, I'm from the Go Beyond uh, Club, and uh, I'm living in Chongqing, China. Nice to see everybody here. Back to you. Thank you very much. Next, I would like to welcome Yolanda as well. Uh, thanks. Aaron, this is Yolanda from Beijing. I'm from Gobian Club, and it's nice to meet everyone here. And thanks, I will do my speech this is Tuesday. Yeah, thank you. Back to Toastmaster. Thank you very much. Next, I would like to welcome Nick. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Nick. I'm from England. And uh, one word that describes me, well, actually, I'm a member of uh, the Seven Dwarfs. I'm actually sleepy, dopey, and happy today. So thank you very much, and see you later. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> OK, I feel a bit sleep now. Uh, next, I would like to welcome our eye counter, Ido. Yep, introduce yourself. Okay. Good morning. Uh, I'm Hideo Imai from Japan. I, uh, I belong to the Diversity Toastmasters Club. I, today I play a role of uh, our counter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, plus again. And uh, next, I would like to welcome Na Naoki. Hello, everyone. My name is Naoki Yoshino. I belong to Diversity Toastmasters Club from Japan. And uh, uh, last October, I came back to Japan from India. I had lived in India for two years. At that time, many members introduced me as the cutest person. The word to describe me is cute. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next is Laurie. Hello, I'm Lori Whitmore from the Boston area. I've been a Toastmaster for over 20 years. One word to describe me would be resourceful. Well, I'll pass to Lori. Uh, next, we have Cheryl. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. My name is Cheryl Poirier. I will be one of the four general evaluators tonight. And if the scene behind me and my virtual background gives you an indication, you might be right to guess that I'm coming from the center of Canada. Ooh. Thank you. I'm feeling the cold from you guys. That's why I'm wearing a blanket. Um, next is Dom. Hi everyone, my name is Doug Thiessen. I'm with the Advanced Toastmasters Online Club. And I'm coming to you today from Cleveland in the United States. But I was formerly from Vancouver, Canada. And the word that I would uh, use to describe me, I hope people find me creative. Oh, cool. Yeah, Next we have Lin Guo from Beijing. Good morning, everybody. My name's Lin. I come from Trainer Toastmasters Club in Beijing. I'm now the area director of History 88 B4 area. The, the word describes me today, especially today, is delighted. 
it's very wonderful experience for me to be with all the friends from all over the world, with all different time zone, and with all different kind of the Toastmasters in on one line. I'm very happy to meet all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And next, I would like to welcome Migumi. Yes, hi, I'm Megumi from Biodiversity Toastmasters Club in Japan. I'm very excited to see lots of Toastmasters from all over the world. Thank you for giving me this opportunity today. Back to you. Thank you. And we welcome Rick after stage next. Good evening, everyone, or good morning, wherever you are. Uh, I am Rick Weiner, I'm Lori Whitmore's husband, so I'm hopefully still in the Boston area with her. And a word to describe me, I suppose, oh, I'm with the Advanced Toastmasters Online. I'm excited to see where this goes and meeting lots of new friends from all over. Thank you, and Mr. President. Thank you very much. And next we have Justin. Hi, friends. I am Justin from Beijing, the group beyond the current VP, and maybe we'll be present next time, next year. One word to describe me is energetic. And if we would like to add one more, it would be down to us. Thank you. And I will be today's G, one of the Gs. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you very much. And next I'll welcome Susan if she's there. A bit lagging, I think. We'll, we'll move on to Yuki first then. Yuki? Uh, hello? Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. My name is Yuki, and I just prepared to talk. I will be Fukushima. I originally from Nara. It's a famous place, a historical place. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yuki. And next, who else is not? Uh, Ronnie? Ronnie, are you there? Ronnie is not there. So, Lisa, are you there? Just double checking with the people. Hey. Hello. Yep. Hello, everyone. Hi, Lisa. I'm Lisa. I, yeah, yeah. I come from Startups Toastmaster Club. I'm in the subway, so a little bit noisy. Uh, I feel very delighted to uh, meet friends from all over the world. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Lisa. Next, I would like to welcome Normel. Normel, are you there? No response. Okay, so... Yeah, I think we have introduced everyone right now. So first of all is that, thank you for everyone for coming by to this meeting. So there are a few things for you to note that this club, Joint Meeting Club, we are having four different traits in this meeting for everyone to wear a heads up. So first of all, I will let each person talks about what their trait will be here. So welcome Dawn to start off first to explain her advanced to a special club. Oops. Thank you, Aaron. Um, I am Dawn O'Sara, and I am the president and the creator, well, founder, one of the many founders of Advanced Toastmasters Online. We are an advanced Toastmasters club who, like, the requirement for our club is to be a CC or above, and also, or also to have two level ones completed within the pathways. One of the things that makes our club really special and stand out is the fact that we do round robin evaluations, which you'll get to experience today with one of our evaluators. And I'm very happy 
to be a part of this joint meeting. Uh, we, our club is specifically for Maverick leaders. So if you feel interested in that, or if you know of other Maverick leaders, let them know about our club. Thank you. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you very much. Go around, Pastor Don. Next, I would like to welcome Justin to introduce his club. Thank you very much, Aaron. I am currently the VP, but will be the president in a few weeks. We are a very new and young club. It is actually the first one created and founded by Chinese and the main members are in mainland China. Go Beyond the Online Toastmasters Club is a bilingual club which connects the Mandarin speakers and the English speak speakers. We would like to challenge ourselves and go beyond the limitations, physically or non-physically, by others or by ourselves. Together, we build our public speaking and the leadership style. Now, go back to you, Aaron. Thank you very much. So you forgot to say about the trade today. Like today, a Go Beyond will be doing a table topic session led by David. Oh, and yes. there is a special 30 second bonus for a heads up on if you actually fumble about table topics, you will see how Go Beyond will bring us to enjoy this wonderful session. Next, it will be- Thank you Mas for adding. No worries. <laughs> and next, I would like to welcome Yuki Masa, the president of diversity. Uh, yes, thank you, Aaron. And then this uh, today's session, uh, Diversity Masters Club will share the opportunity for the feedback. Uh, we will do the feedback session after the previous speech uh, for two minutes silence, and then we will type into the chat function uh, to give uh, the prepared speaker for some feedbacks uh, directly. So if we have a chance, then uh, we could try that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have also incorporated the diversity's feature trait that there will be a one minute of silence after every speaker for everyone to give some comments and feedbacks for to improve on themselves because everyone is a great evaluator within their hearts. Next is from me. Uh, I am the president of Compare Communicators. Today I'm honored to be delivered to of our special traits. One of them is actually you have experienced the welcoming session. So we always do a present welcome for every single one in the room without fail. And two is that we are having a role called the body language monitor. So I will personally demonstrate how that will be done. We'll be explaining how we can put ourselves and feature ourselves on the screen to be perfectly sync and great looking on the screen. So that will be the role of the body language monitor later on. So without further ado, are you guys all ready for the meeting? Everyone can actually unmute yourself and say, Yay! Yay. Yes. Okay, so. Yes, absolutely. Today, we'll be introducing two Toastmasters of the evening or morning, depending on the situation. Me and Don will be actually tagging on to be the Toastmaster of the evening to lead everyone up in these fantastic meetings. So, in any Toastmaster meeting, we do usually do have three important. Yeah, three important sessions. The first one is the table topic session. The second one is the prepared speech session. And finally, the evaluation. But before that amazing part happens, we need to have our facilitators. So first of all, I would like to throw the ball to Don because it's a very casual MC. So to introduce the facilitators. Thank you, Aaron. And I, at this time, I would like to uh, introduce our awe counter of the day. Is our awe counter here? Yep. Haido? Yep. Thank you. Please come use yourself. Thank you. I'm Hideo Imai. Today's awe counter. I'll count the pillar words such as ah, um, you know, during the meeting. And I'll report the number of the such a word, uh, speaker used later. Thank you. Thank you. 
And next, I would like to introduce our grammarian, Yuki Masa. Yes, thank you very much, Dawn. Yes, today I would like to share our uh, uh, today I would like to, the grammarian needs the role to, to, keep, uh, to keep tracking of the usage of the good phrases in the meeting and plus the some uh, little bit corrections in the usage and then I would like to listen to your speeches all through and then the picking up some uh, words and phrases. And also as the grammarian I would like to take the word of the day and then uh, Today's word of the day would be uh, concert, uh, concerted. Concerted is the, concerted. yeah, concerted. The meaning is mutually planned and arranged or combined. So concerted is a little bit, it's a kind of like the words of the uh, how to say, musical word. However, it can be used for all of us uh, in, the, in this opportunity. So four clubs are get together and then arrange mutually and plan. So we would like to use this, uh, mean, this word for expressing some collaborative or collaborative or some of the words. So the, please use this concerted as many as you can. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to introduce Aaron Long, who will be our body language monitor. Thank you. I forgot to unmute. So, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, my role today is a body language monitor. So, what do I describe is really looking at every single screen that's happening in this room right now. And I'll be giving jotting down some notes of how you can position better and making sure that we feel your soul through eye contact. I'll be describing different techniques to improve yourself as well. So that will be our, one of our special features that awaits you in the end of the reading. Back to you, Don. Thank you, Aaron. And next, I'd like to introduce our chat monitor today, and that's Lanan. chat monitor. Thank you. You're still muted. Hold on. It's still on mute. We cannot hear you. Maybe, maybe she's typing in chat. Oh, maybe try unplugging your earphones and see if that works. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and our next role that I'd like to introduce is our timer today, and that's Doug Thiessen. Please help me welcome Doug Thiessen. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Thiessen. I'll be the timer for today. And so we have interesting challenges when it comes to the virtual meeting. I have timing lights near my shoulder that you can see. So at the appropriate times, I would turn on the green light that says that you've reached a reasonable amount of time and you could stop. The yellow light when you're approaching the amount of, or your full allotted time and you should be stopping and the red light when you've exceeded your allotted time and you should have stopped. What I recommend to everybody who's speaking so that we can be concerted together is to keep my thumbnail visible on your screen so that you can actually see the lights. I will also work to send a chat, uh, green, yellow, and red to the speakers to let them know as well as a secondary. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. And at this time, I'm going to volley this meeting back over to Aaron. 
No worries. Uh, it's about like a catch and throw. That's no, okay. Uh, now it's the time whereby we are going to start our prepared speech session. This prepared speech session is about our members actually preparing very, very deeply on their work and also their project itself. So to deliver a very fresh sensation speech that may inspire, transform us and connect with us. So we are having our first speaker. Let me find where she is. I found her. Is Yolanda. Let me introduce a bit about Yolanda a bit. So Yolanda is... Yeah. Okay, so I need to be... Uh, I'll be a bit for Yolanda first. So Yolanda is a very hardworking individual when I see her first time and they'll be on. And today she's going to deliver a CC10 speech. Time is 8 to 10 minutes. And also... The topic is listening. It's an art of listening. And she has been very supportive of Go Beyond. And most importantly, she always dazzle out with her speech. Because every speech that I hear from her is something that connects deeply from her heart to ours. So are you guys all interested to start listening to Yolanda and giving her CC10 to finish for her CC manual? If yes, Yolanda, are you ready? If you're ready, just give us a thumbs up so I will prepare you for that. Thank you, Aaron. I could start anytime. I'm okay. in a lobby and sorry for the noise if you hear any. No worries. So without further ado, let's welcome Yolanda. On her seat. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Uh, my speech today is listening. <laughs> Uh, as poor as my personal skills are, which I don't want to offer any embarrassing examples to you, I just decided to improve my personal skills one month before. Because when I think of intimate friends, I can't think out why immediately. When I would like to share my dilemma and it is out, no one is a proper person to share. It is my own fault. When my friend came to speak with me, I just want to concentrate on work in hand. I ignore them totally. I refuse to listen to them. I could find out some excuses to defend myself. However, the result is the same. I have lost chances to build relationships. So you can see, it started with I didn't listen to them. I can't imagine how large listening can influence. <sighs> So I did some research. Research shows that listening will influence my approachability, um, my compassion, conflict management, my interpersonal skills, organization agility, personal listening, priority setting, and skills in capability improvement. The one who doesn't listen may be labeled as arrogant, defensive, don't care, don't value others, impatient, insensitive, selective listening, too busy. I asked myself if I am any type of both. I don't think so. I didn't want to be. However, when I listen to others, I used to interrupt people. I'm just too willing to express I had understood or I had had answers. Do you listen to anyone? Your boss? A chairman? A mother? Your children? This officer, best friend, mentor, spouse, professional colleague outside of work. I listen, but <laughs> not truly listen. So I start my journey of improving. I'm sorry, my gloss. <clears throat> the research shows that uh, the tapes I need to um, learn is that. Don't interrupt before people have finished. Don't suggest words when they hesitate. Okay, don't finish their sentences for them. Don't wave off any further input by saying, yes, I know that. Yes, I know where you're going. Yes, I have heard it before. <laughs> All these words. So I practice, so I practice. I interview some candidates, it are delivered. I want to practice the listening so 
even they are saying nonsense, I keep patience and listening until they finish. However, I found that HR didn't deliver the right person. I decided to stop the conversation properly. Then I asked the CEO in HR what's their target requirement for this position. I, I asked more questions in order to understand, so I listen without questions that will motivate people. So the second tip I think is that ask more than tell, yes. However, is that the listening truly is? Listening means that you know others have said and mean to say, but still you're leaving people comfortably that they have had their say. So most people know techniques about what I mentioned, but I don't think we truly understand. Has anyone here that come place to you or be complaced or be thanked for your listening? If the answer is yes, then you have a selective listening problem. But if you know, we really think about if we listen to other people. So first of all, remember the basics. We need to close our mouth. When our mouth opens, your ears will auto automatically close. You have your own contact, you take notes, you don't frown or frigid. How do people know you are understood? A paraphrase that you have said to their satisfactory. How do people know if you have accepted or rejected what you have understood they have said? You tell them. Hopefully, in a tactic way, you reject what they have had to say, give your reasons. If time is really important, you can say, Let me see if you know where it is going. Or oh, I wonder if we could summarize to save. Both of our some time. So, funneling a transaction answer, solution, or conclusion, or statement, and dedicate, shut, and people down. You've told them your mind's already made up. Listen first, solve second. Good listeners have lots of questions to get good understanding. Prompting questions, clarifying questions for me. Is this what you have saying? Questions. Ask one more question that you do now. And add to until people signal you that they think you are truly, truly listening. Wish you have this experience as well. So. Members, please tell me, are you a good listener? Are you listening to my speech? Can you give me a response? I'll, listen. I'll look at the screen. Great, nice. Yes. Thanks. So next time when anyone delivers a speech on Toastmaster, they just want us to listen. Probably the evaluation is important, but listening is more important than that. Because I will feel I'm respected from all your thoughts, your faces, your attitude, your attention. Next time, all your parents. Wanted to speak to you. And you heard thousands of times. Just keep patience and listen until they finish. When your daughter disturbed their work, I want you to listen. Just stop and listen. She'll be very happy, even very tiny things. She wants to share with you. She'll be saying that she needs to do that in the future as well. And when someone reports to you, want to share some information, but that's just nonsense, you know, it's not important, it's not your priority. Just try to listen. 
Now keep you and him close. Thank you. That's my speech today. Thanks, everyone. Now is the time whereby we will incorporate the special feature of diversity to be putting a one minute of silence in between every speech. So dog, when the one minute is up, give us a red signal and that will actually help us to gauge. So feel free to type in your message in the chat box. Anything that you find great, anything you want to challenge or recommend to her, please leave it at the chat box. Thank you very much, Doc. Next is the moment whereby I have to welcome this person with very, very great attitude, I would say. When I say attitude, meaning a very positive way of saying, this person, I've encountered her quite some time ago. And this person has inspired me a lot in terms of her dedications, her, her tough journeys, and also most importantly, she is always a love to all because of her active participation in most of the online Toastmaster Club. Wherever I go, I will see her somewhere. Obviously, I'm not following the script a bit <laughs> for Trisha. Trisha will be doing a level three leadership development speech, increase, increasing your knowledge, connect with storytelling, titled Meeting Misako. Her evaluator will be Neil, Nick from our club, Comparative Communicators. Speech length is five to seven minutes, if I'm not wrong. To, to me, she has inspired me the most of something called the Toastmaster with many hats. If anyone doesn't know what that phrase means, that means that the person is very all-rounded in doing every single role in Toastmasters. So let's welcome all of our hard work with applause on the stage titled Meeting Misako. Thank you, dear friends, those of I know very well, and some of you are meeting for the first time today. Do you remember meeting your best friend? Do you remember the time and place and what the circumstances were? I bet you remember every detail, the smallest. I would like to show, share with you today how I met my good friend, Masako. Not once, but twice. First, my story begins. I began, I became a Toastmaster back in May of 2017 in the Land Club in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I was very driven. I wanted to complete a triple crown, which is three educational awards in one Toastmaster year. And my physical club only met twice a month, so I thought it was going to be very difficult to be able to complete that feat. So I started looking around and oh, lo and behold, there's such a thing as online clubs. I was so excited. And the first one I checked out was an advanced club, which I didn't actually qualify for at the time because I had not finished my first six speeches, which was their requirement. 
but one of the members invited me to a club that hadn't yet found it. Paul Finkelstein invited me to check out competitive communicators and I became a founding member. Well, I was helping this club charter. I was privileged to meet a fellow Toastmaster whose name was Misako. As Misako and I became more involved with each other and talked more and more often as she attended the club meetings, I found out that we were, had so much in common. She was an online first-time president, and I was a land-based first-time president. She had grown up in Japan, which the culture doesn't va value female voices very much, and she had been felt stunted and didn't feel appreciated for her input. And I, I have felt un under a lie my entire life that I didn't matter, that my voice was not wanted. And through Toastmasters, we both found our voice and a wonderful friendship. We did so many projects and, and held so many meetings together. And eventually, I started attending her club, Buddies, online, and became a member there as well. Through our, our wonderful friendship over this last year and a half, talking both online and offline, through, through Facebook and emails, any way we could connect. I brought up one time, and it's like, Masako, I know you live on the west coast of America, Washington State, and I live on the east coast of Pennsylvania. There's a lot of land in between. However, if you ever plan to come to the Gettysburg or Harrisburg area, please let me know. I would love to offer you to stay at my house. And of course, she reciprocated and said, well, if you ever happen to be on the west coast, in Washington State, let me know and make sure that you're able to stay here with me. Well, it just so happened that one of my husband's lifelong dreams was to drive the West Coast Coastal Highway Route 101. And finally, after years of talking about it, he decided that we were going to plan a trip and drive a small portion of the coastal road. I said, well, let me call Misako because I would love to have dinner with her and possibly her husband if he's home while we're out there. I would love to meet her. And he said, was in agreement. I said, okay, she seems like a lovely lady. And I called her and I said, guess what? We are going to be in Washington State for a whole entire week. Can we meet and have lunch? <laughs> oh, but she went one better than that. She said, well, I happen to be house sitting a beach house on the ocean. Why don't you come stay with us there? I was like, okay, okay, twist my arm, why don't you? I would love to come visit you. So first, we flew six hours to get to Washington State. And next, we drove for three more hours to reach this wonderful little cottage on the ocean and meet Misako in person. When we parked, I texted her, we're here. Uh, the door flew open and this tiny little hurricane runs down the stairs with her arms wide open, yelling a joyful screaming noise <laughs> that I won't repeat here all the way down the stairs and engulfs me in this tiny little hug. I say tiny because my friend 
Masako barely reached my shoulder and I am five foot four and as you can see she barely reaches my shoulder and here we are with the famous Toastmaster International magazine for our submission to the magazine itself which we have submitted hopefully we'll see you soon <laughs> I've been so blessed to be able to meet one of my very good friends twice, once online and just recently in person. And I'd like you to consider with all the friends that we now know and have met this morning, afternoon, or evening, perhaps think of the other benefit of Toastmasters that's not widely promoted is that you could open your home to a fellow Toastmaster who's visiting the area and get to meet and perhaps make a good friend yourself. Back to you, Erin. Can I applause to her speech? Now, oh, I forgot to stop my video. Now it's a one minute of silence where I want to give some comments to Trisha. Thank you, Doc. The next speaker is always bringing me a vibe. And bringing me a vibe is like the moment when I met Don. And I was thinking about, are there lots of perfect moments that we have, Don? Perfect moments? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, I've had a couple of perfect moments, I think. How about you, Aaron? Still very perfect moments for me. And, and those are perfect moments whereby I met this lovely speaker. That's through our Victoria partnership back in the days of Tokushima and Victoria when, when they are still very active in this collaborations of joint partnership between two different countries. And Yuki was one of the most liveliest person I've ever met at that time. So Yuki will be delivering her CC6 on Focal Variety. Her speech title is Not Perfect But Great. Not Perfect But Great. Let's welcome Yuki up the stage to, in, to talk about her speech. Give her a round of applause, please. Do you, do you like to sing? Yes, I like to sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive her King. Singing, it seems to be free expression for many kinds of music. Just classical, and pops. But singing is not perfect for expressing all kinds of musical notes. This is a tuner in my iPad. 
What is my lowest pulse? E3. What is my highest pulse? B5. It means my range is my voice is only around two octaves. When I was a junior high school student, I was joining in the brass band club and I played the clarinet. The lowest note of the clarinet is D3 and the highest note is A6. So the range is the note is around over three octaves. It's great, but still not perfect. The clarinet can't play calls by itself. When I entered the university, I decided to join the mandolin club. This is my mandolin. It is not a ukulele. I can play calls like C. And G. The range is from G C. Sorry, G three to E E seven. is the main melody. This is the second melody. I'll play these together. do this, but it's very difficult. Theoretically, I can play four notes at the same time, but in the song, it's very tough. The mandarin is great, but not perfect. If I play on the piano, play this on the piano, I can play the piano. I can play this only one hand. Does anyone play the piano? Piano has very, very wide range and we can play 10 notes at the same time. Piano looks like perfect, easy and perfect instrument. But there is one thing that piano doesn't do. question in one note. I can play with clarinet and I can play it on the mandolin with tremolo. I can sing this. But piano doesn't do that. And also piano has one big disadvantage that is not portable. 
piano is not perfect. But great to play, great to listen to other instruments too. Only one clarinet, that might be boring. Only one mandolin, that might be boring too. Only one person singing, that might be boring. They are not perfect. Let me sing it with flame. with others, play it with others, it would become greater. That way we can make very fantastic music. There is more, but if we gather, we can accomplish the big thing. Let's sing together. Let's walk together and let's help each other. Thank you. Thank you very much, your applause, Fuyuki, and great music. It definitely stir up the atmosphere. So one minute of silence for everyone to leave some comments for Yuki. Thank you, Doc. The next person I would like to welcome and the final prepared speaker for today is Sunny Fridge. Sunny Fridge is a very decent Toastmaster, currently VP of Comparative Communicators, and she'll be giving her presentation mastery level to learning your style at how to be fear at your own game. And I do not know. Oh, thank you, Sunny. <laughs> to, to me, Sunny is a hot worker, a professional speaker, and a coach that many people in Toastmaster world would look up to. Because that's one thing that she has been putting on a lot in her title, which is called the John Maxwell if I correct me if I'm wrong, John Maxwell uh, certified trainer. And that was one of the things that I also inspired to have uh, one day eventually. And without further ado, with our lovely smiles from Sunny, let's welcome Sunny to give her speech. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. When it comes to public speaking, there are two types of speakers in the world. So says American novelist Mark Twain, those that are nervous and those that are liars. Public speaking, as you all probably know, is the number one fear for so many people. There are so many other fears, fear of snakes, dogs, heights, 
death even. I'd like to share what comedian Jerry Seinfeld has to say. <laughs> now, for many of us, public speaking is no laughing matter. But what I say is that if you learn what fear is, then you can face it. According to dictionary.com, fear is a distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, evil, pain, and whether the threat is real or imagined, it's the feeling or condition of being afraid. There are triggers to fear that you have to know about in order to deal with it. Sometimes it's new and unknown situations. You've never seen an audience before. You've never been in a certain place before. That can trigger fear. Risk of failure. Growing up, we all wanted to be number one. And sometimes when you aren't, you have that fear. It's a trigger. There's the potential for looking foolish in front of friends and strangers. And then there's that possibility of boring an audience. By a show of hands, how many of you have ever been at a speech presentation where someone bored you? By a show of hands, how many of you were that speaker? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Hopefully, some of you have heard of this game. Uh, I had an intro that I wanted to at least let you know what this was about, but this is about beating fear at its own game. And I like to, when I'm not competing or training people, I like to watch Family Feud. And so I'm going to play this little game with you. So if you know this, if you know a little bit about this, I want you to clap along with me as we get started for Family Feud. Woohoo! All right. So let's get started. In Family Feud, we always survey 100 people and we ask them a question. This question that was asked was, name symptoms you experienced during the fear of speaking. Trisha's gonna help me. A few of you, would you put something, a, a symptom in the chat and Trisha will let me know and I'll tell you whether or not you got it right. So what symptom do you have when you have that fear of speaking? Someone put it in the chat real quick, real quick. Wait, Sweating. Oh, Trisha, give me an in. Sweating. Someone, yay. A red face. Red face. Good answer, but no. A fast heartbeat. That fast heartbeat. The number one answer. Woohoo! Shake. All right, I'll take another answer. Shaking voice or body. Shaking body. Very good. And then finally, I'm going to give the other answer. Butterflies in the stomach and together we'll say lightheadedness. Very good. So once you understand those, those types of symptoms, you can learn to beat fear at its own game. Studies show that if you have experience and you start speaking more, you'll be less afraid. So here's what you want to do. Practice in front of a mirror. It's always good to see your face and how you look when you're, you're, you're looking at yourself, just like you might be looking at yourself right now. You can see your animation, your eyes, or whether your hair is messed up or something is distracting to the audience. You can record yourself on a smartphone for more detailed information about how you look to others. And the more you know, well, the more you know. Rehearse in front of family and friends. That's a concerted effort to beat fear at its own game. Deliver a speech before your Toastmasters Club, as so many of us do each week. That's the way to beat that fear. And then if you're an aspiring speaker or an entrepreneur, you'll want to give a presentation before other groups anywhere you can. I want to share a speech I did early last year.
I was nervous before that speech, and I had butterflies in my stomach, but I knew that one of the ways to get rid of my butterflies was to engage the audience. I used a bit of humor. I channeled the Oprah Winfrey in me. You get a card. You get a card. And they laughed. And, you know, when you get that audience and engagement, they want to see you succeed. So that's another thing that you can do. And then the other thing I'll share with you today is positive affirmations, how you think about yourself and what you say to yourself impacts how you, what you believe about yourself. Many times you'll probably say, some of you right now, I don't feel confident speaking in front of people. They don't like listening to me. I don't know the right words to say or it takes too much time to prepare a presentation. So you have to beat fear at its own game and say, I feel confident speaking in front of other, other people. The people I'm speaking to want to hear from me. In conclusion, it's normal to feel nervous. Your audience won't notice. Use experience and the affirmation methods to exhibit confidence because confidence breeds competence. It's not whether you're nervous, it's whether you show it. It's not whether you have fear, it's whether you show it. It's not whether you're confident, it's whether you show it. Face your fear. Beat fear at its own game. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much. Give a round of applause again. And one minute of silence for everyone. Thank you, Ugo. <laughs> My bad. I missed it. So now is the time whereby we have finished the, the four speakers for the Brad speech, and now we're moving on to the table topic session. The table topic session today will be played a bit differently than most of the regular table topics. How is it different? Is that there will be three speakers from each club going for the table topics and two speaking slots for our guests. If you're a guest, not belong to any of the four clubs, you still have the chance to participate in this amazing session. <laughs> so who is the person that's in charge of leading this program of table topics? Is he ready? Is he ready already? And he's waving. So he's definitely ready. So let's welcome our table topic master, David, off the stage. Hello, everybody. Yeah, it's, it, it's exciting to enter the table topic session. I'm honored to host uh, today's uh, longest uh, table topic. It will be very, very fun. Yeah. Uh, what today, uh, our table uh, topic session is about friendship, right? So what will come to you at first? And uh, when speaking friendship, so for me, I I remember one uh, song. I think you will have here the all long thing. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you. Uh, it is the music uh, remind me for the friendship. Okay, uh, today I prepared uh, 15 topics and uh, you are able to choose uh, a number randomly from 1 to 15 and uh, deliver your speech. So you have 20 seconds for preparation and uh, then finish uh, one to two minutes topic. So now I'm with, uh, I'm looking forward to your show, show time. Okay, so who will be the first one? David, you can pick any club you want. Right. Okay. How about uh, diversity? Then from diversity, how about Takako-san? Sure. Okay, Takako, you can choose a number. Uh, number seven, please. Okay, number seven. Yeah, can you imagine a life without friends? Can you imagine a life without friends? It's weird. <laughs> okay. No, I can't uh, live without uh, friends. Uh, if I was uh, left alone in an isolated, uh, I mean, in an unmanned island, I would die because of the loneliness. and. I, I've been helped a lot by my friends, and um, that's why uh, that made me what I am today. So without the friends, I cannot uh, improve myself, I cannot live. So uh, friends are uh, one of the most important things in my life. and. Uh, Toastmastering, uh, when I uh, became a member of Toastmasters Club, I didn't have a lot of friends who can share uh, with me uh, how to improve my English. So uh, by entering Toastmasters Club, I've learned a lot and I could make lots of friends, not only in Tokushima, but from all over Japan, and now, today, I can share my experience and learn a lot from people from all over the country. So, those masters uh, is a good opportunity for me to make good friends. So, I can't do without my friends. Thank you. Thank you, Takaku. Uh, happy for you. Uh, now we move next. Um, so I pick next one. Uh, the one the Toastmasters. Hello, I don't. Okay. Yeah. You can choose a member. Choose a member. I would like to know if Gail would like like to participate as a guest from our club. Gail, would you be up to doing this? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, you can do the number. Uh, okay, what was the number chosen before seven? Okay, I'll pick two. Okay. The number two, what is your instant memory about one of your friends? Where is my, what was that, what, what is your, could you repeat the question? Oh, yeah. instant. What is your instant memory about one of your friends? Let's 
see, my instant memory, I'd have to say that would be about Doug. And when we got married, um, now Doug is my best friend and my husband and that's great. But when we got married, um, somebody, one of the guests asked us if we were going to smash cake in each other's faces. And, and then Doug said, I think we'll eschew that one. And that just, <laughs> I, it cracked me up. <laughs> so I remember one of the pictures that the photographer took was of, of my face after Doug said that. And that, that was just, that's just so funny. I always remember that moment in our wedding. Oh, that, that was just so funny. Um, is there a timing light? I can't see the timing light. Oh, here you are. Okay. Hi. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that was my, that was definitely my favorite moment. <laughs> and, uh, let's see. Definitely my favorite moment involving a friend. And um, I have some other instant memories of Doug. I mean, when he, he'll say these things that are obvious, you know, he'll, he'll say, um, well, this is really a combination of moments. He likes to make these puns and he'll introduce them in kind of an innocent way so you don't see it coming. Um, <laughs> And like one was, he, he hold, I know um, a couple named Holly and Tong, and he held up a pair of tongs and said that they go with Holly. And then I was like, oh my God, that was just so funny. <laughs> oh, I also remember, and they were, um, I remember a moment involving a joke I made about Doug in a speech. And I was talking about that I didn't marry Doug for love. I married him for his GPS system. And he just, he just helped me so much when he had a GPS system and I didn't. So, Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so Thank those you. are the mem memories of my best friend, who is my husband, Doug. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the sharing. Okay, now uh, we move next to Go Beyond. Uh, which one will deliver the table topic? Let's welcome then our guest from Go Beyond. Okay, Lynn, uh, yes. please. Yes, thank you so much, it's my pleasure. I would like to choose number five. Uh, uh, okay, number five. Number five is uh, what will happen if you treat yourself as a best friend? Uh, what, what will happen if you treat yourself as a best friend? Thank you, David, for your wonderful question. What would be happen if I treat myself as my best friend? Well, to tell the truth, well, actually, in my past more than 40 years, I really don't really treat myself as my best friend. I always treat myself as I didn't work so hard. I didn't achieve what I would like to be. I didn't be the person I like to be in my life. I always compare with the others, and sometimes I feel not very happy when I go with myself and I think I'm not that good enough. But recently I realized that it is not the correct thing. Actually speaking, you are the only and the most important good friend and the best friend of yourself. Whenever you are, wherever you are, you are always be with yourself. As in our Toastmasters, I really think 
we just encourage the others to be the person to be more inspired in a very good way. And also, I also think it is the best idea for us to be with us, to inspire us, to be with us, to treat ourselves as the best friend. As long as you can do this, we'll be always with you and you could have more power in front of the friends to keep them lightened, but to keep them, keep them their encouragement, the inspiration, and also forward encouragement. So by, being, by doing this, I really believe that to be with yourself as the best friend is the only way that you can do the ever best in your life. Thank you, David. I didn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, thanks, Lee. Thank thanks. you. Okay, now we move to uh, competitive communications. I would like to nominate Nick. Hello, hi, Nick. Welcome. Hi, David. Yeah, what's your lucky number? Three. Okay, three, uh, number three. Okay, did you ever feel hard to say no to your friend? Yeah, let me present. Okay, did you ever feel hard to say no to your friend? David, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests, have I ever said no to my friends? Yes but they ignored me anyway because they knew, they knew I would actually go and do it. Whatever it is, I try to help my friends because at the end of the day, without friends, you have nobody, you have nothing. You don't pick your family, they're born with you. You pick your friends and when you pick your friends, they're like a tattoo that you have for life. You, you never, get, uh, never shake them, you, you, they're always with you. And when somebody asks you, they're not asking because they think, oh, well, let's just ask for fun and everything. What they're doing is they're asking for help, then be helpful, do the best that you can with your friends. And also, you create memories with them. You create memories like today. Look at the memories that we're creating. Nobody knew what was going to happen today. Aaron asked me, Nick, do you want to be an evaluator today? It's three o'clock in the morning for me. And of course, I said, yes, I want to do this. This is what you do for friends. Never say no, do your best, work hard, and then what happens after that is beyond your control. The main thing is do the best you can for anybody and a lot of them will become your friends. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Uh, I heard you uh, telling us, picking a appropriate friend. Thank you, Nick. Okay, so next uh, is a chance for our guests. Yeah, please uh, raise your hand or voice out. Nobody? <laughs> Uh, someone nominate Rick. Uh, Rick. Rick, Rick. Someone uh, nominated Rick. Is Rick still here? I am. Hello, hi, Rick. You can choose a number uh, other than two, three, five, seven. Four. Okay. Number four, yeah, this is a, uh, what is your feeling now in the online joint Toastmaster meeting? <coughs> yeah, what, what is your, Excuse me, I'm sorry. No, it's, yeah, it's okay. Now, what is your feeling now in the online joint Toastmaster meeting? Well, excuse me, it's a, <coughs>
I'm having a little trouble with coughing. Uh, my feelings on online Toastmasters meeting is it's a new skill I've been learning. My uh, participating in an online Toastmasters meeting has brought me to a whole different level and has allowed me to develop skills using technology. Being the old man that I am, I'm able to show up to young people and say, let's do a Zoom meeting. But beyond that, what I really enjoy about being in this online meeting is listening to people from all over the world, watching you, experiencing you in a Toastmasters meeting. I met people from all over at international conferences, but that's not attending a meeting together. That's not doing table topics together. That's not <coughs> <laughs> listening to speeches. I think I'm going to have to call it quits. I, I'm coughing and I can't uh, continue on. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it's okay. It's very glad to hear you. Yeah, Rick. Thank you. Okay, so we can continue next round. So how about starting from uh, advanced Toastmasters? I saw our timer. Let's, okay, uh, yeah. Well, actually, Rick was just from advanced Toastmasters. Oh, uh, okay. But I can take a question if you'd like. Uh, why don't I go with 10? Okay, uh, number 10 is uh, what kind of support you got or expected from friends when you, uh, during a hard time? So what kind of support you got or expect from friends during a hard time? What kind of support have I got? Or would I expect from friends? I think that's kind of two different questions. Although, not entirely, because I have received some great support during hard times from friends. And I've seen amazing examples of support during hard times that I could talk about. There's some colleagues of mine that, well, in one case, there's a fellow named Bill who, a few years ago, he lost his wife rather unexpectedly. She was rushed to the hospital all of a sudden one day. And she was very ill in the hospital for several days before she died. And in that time, the number of friends that came out to support and just be with her in the hospital and be with Bill in the hospital. It just was hard to even count. But I know he really appreciated that support. And then after she passed, friends continued to show up at his house and to support him and make him feel better and provide whatever they could to just help out and that included helping take care of his children because now he's a widower and would be a single father helping clean the house because he the whole family was just devastated especially in the few days afterwards trying to plan a funeral and beyond that and that kind of support is so valuable when you have a group of friends and a real community that can provide that support. It's hard to even imagine having to go through that. But I know that I've got support from friends who will be there for me if it ever happened to me too. Back to you. Thank you, Doc, for sharing this uh, memorable story. Thank you. Okay, our next uh, uh, 
let me um, pick diversity. Okay, how about Megumi? Uh, number eight, please. Okay, uh, number eight. Wait for a moment. Uh, if you and your friend have a uh, dispute and cannot agree with each other at all, what will you do think for that? Okay, you have 20 seconds uh, for preparation. Okay, um, if I and my friends uh, dispute each other and argue with a kind of mother, and uh, I usually uh, try to compromise each other, uh, usually find a point which uh, we can compromise each other, and uh, mm, if we can't mm, find the point, then I try to take time to what what I can do for her or him, and and uh, mm, but uh, in my, uh, but personally, I usually try to persuade. Uh, I can find. I uh, I usually try to find what I can uh, how how to persuade him so but i try to try to find a, a point that uh um, find a good good point to for for him or her because um uh my i i so i think my friend is very important for me so i don't want to lose my friend so um, um, usually, uh, I usually take lots of time to discuss with each other. Thank you. Ah, but thank you. Thank you, Megumi. Uh, it's really a challenging topic. Thanks for sh sharing your opinion. Okay, so now uh, next uh, we will go to competitive communicators. I will throw the ball to, I think she knows that I'm going to call her, Cheryl. Uh, I'm muted. Who muted me? I will pick 13. 13? 13. Okay. Okay. 13. If you have a pet which is able to talk, what she or he would say to you? <laughs> Let me uh, share my screen. If you have a pet which is able to talk, what she or he would say to you? Hmm. Well, Mr. Table Topics Master, fellow Tokes Masters, I do not own a pet. Not at this point, but I have had pets in the past. I've had gerbils, I've had hamsters in my house. We've had a dog, we've babysat cats, and my son has two cats. But I think if there was a pet in this household, that poor animal would be constantly complaining. Why can't I walk on this slippery floor? Can't you put something down where my nails won't scratch and I won't be sliding everywhere? that poor animal would probably be wondering why I'm sort of picky with the food and only give just enough for that animal's weight and particular breed. You see, I'm very into nutrition and I think even pets should be well nourished. I also think I'd have a pet who'd complain because I would be constantly vacuuming up their hairs if they had hair constantly changing the water or putting freshener in it if it was a fish or something else that needed a lot of water. And 
they would be wondering why their environment is constantly changing. Now, I think also because I love animals, even though I found out I can't have them in my house, it's a bad reaction, I think they would also feel loved because I would be the one who would be talking to them I would be the one who would be petting them if they're the kind of pet that needs petting. And I would be the one who would be taking them out for walks if that's also what they needed. Because I tell you, my husband is sure not going to do it. It would all be on mom. So thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. I think I would have a pet that would have a lot to say but I think also that they'd like to be in my house. Back to you. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, very lovely uh, story and the, glad to have your opinion. Okay, uh, I, I just uh, got a message from our timer. We, our timer is up. Is it, am I correct? Hi, dog. Yes, um, we're actually 10 minutes past the time where we're, where we're listed for a five minute break to move to evaluation. So we're a bit behind on the agenda now. Okay, uh, so yeah, okay, yeah. Sorry, uh, we, it seems we have to move on. Thanks to the concerted effort for everybody uh, who made this joint meeting happen. Back to you, Postmaster. Thank you very much. As I've been busily circling around, we are going to have our break <laughs> now officially. So let, let's kick off for a five minute break and then everyone can chill, have fun, chit chat. And now I'll pause the recording so you guys, or, or you guys can, uh, I, I think pause the recording will be fine. So. <laughs> So now is a time whereby I will be throwing the ball back to Don to eval to lead Don the evaluators session. Oh yay! Thanks, Don. Thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, at this time, I'm going to start the evaluations by evaluating uh, Yolanda's speech, and we're going to try to keep this moving quickly. I think we we have to because of the time. Yep. And Yolanda's speech, her um, objectives of her 10th speech from the Compet or Competent Communicator's Guide is to inspire the audience by appealing to noble motives and challenging the audience to achieve a higher level of beliefs or achievement, appeal to the audience's needs and emotions using stories and antidotes and quotes and to add drama. Um, and avoid use notes. I believe that Yolanda did not use notes and it didn't seem that she did. And I will have to say that this was a great speech. The, the topic was listening and it was a challenge and I wanted to hear. It, was, it made me use active listening just to get to hear what she was saying because there was so much background noise. And I think it was, it could have been taken as a negative, but I kind of thought it was a, it was a positive challenge for me as an evaluator to really listen and listen for questions that I might have for her. Um, I thought that she did a great job of bringing in um, research, bringing in antidotes, and stories. Those were the three big points that I thought were very well put together and well um, planned. It seemed that she had practiced this speech and done it many times. I don't know how she was able to give a speech while she, all that noise was going on around her, uh, but that I thought that was an excellent um, way, or just, just an excellent example of how you can overcome things. 
Thank you, Doug, <laughs> for the timer. And I'm not going to go on too much. I really enjoyed this speech. I wanted to hear more in this. The, the call to action was for us to listen and to go through those three steps of listening, listening, ask questions, leaving the people with a, a sense that they've been heard and understood, and then let them know that you get them and get to that point where they do that. So at this point, I would say focus on being heard as a great way to allow us to get into the uh, speech and be more active listeners ourselves. So back to you. Oh, next evaluator. Aaron, would you like to, who is our next evaluator? You need some help not, gathering. are not going to do the round robin. round robin. Oh, the round robin. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> At this point, our club does the round robin. <laughs> um, and, but at this time, what I do is we Doug will give us another minute, and we do just ask anyone else have any feedback for Yolanda as far as just open the mic up and just give her some feedback verbally on her speech. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to say something. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, totally agree with you, um, uh, with you, Dawn, that she was very focused. And even though there was things going around, that was great practice to be a wonderful speaker, to be able to get your voice heard, even though there are lots of distractions. So really commend you on that. Well done. Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. The next person who wanted to share. I heard someone else. Oh, so I'll, I'll just kick off next one. Uh, I, I really love about the part whereby Yolanda actually was very composed and adaptive to the situation. That is a sign of a very great professional speaker. Always control and pretend that everyone doesn't know that you're nervous. Okay? And be uh, the voice that you actually give us on the pacing and pausing. That was amazing. Even when there is loads of background noise, I can still hear clearly on what she says. And she was really in depth, lovely. Challenge for her, be a bit more dramatic. Gestures may help a lot in, in terms of speech. Yep. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And at this time, I'm going to close the round robin due to time. And that's how we do it. We just open that up. Thank you very much. And Aaron, could you help me introduce the next evaluator? Okay, the next person that is going to evaluate would be Nick, Nick from Compare Communicators. He will be evaluating our second speaker, Trisha Grove. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I'm going to be evaluating a level three speech by Trisha called Connecting with Storytelling. The actual title of the presentation is called Meeting Misako. In the introduction, let me ask you, did Trisha demonstrate her descriptive skills to make her story relatable and, um, and interesting? Hands up? Yes, I thought so too. Did she develop a personal style when telling her story? Yes, she was clear, confident, not afraid to put pauses in there to accentuate her point. Number three, did Trisha tell us a story that elicited an emotional impact on the audience? Yes, yes, and yes. Let's look at this more closely. My first big commendation for Trisha is that she introduced the scene very well. She was motivated and found the online clubs. She also asked us, do you remember meeting your first friend, your best friend? So really good engagement with the audience there. Second uh, big commendation on there, uh, the details in describing her story to us. Driving on the West Coast Highway 101, her hands gestures with twisted her arm and flying for six hours and driving for three hours more. So really describe what she actually did, what she and her husband actually did. Also, the door flew open on that. So, one uh, rec recommendation that I have, when you use the hand gestures, start near your face and then work outwards because we lost some of the hand gestures below the line of the screen. So try that out, start center, work out. 
Secondly, a second recommendation, develop the story some more. You had, to, you had a lot of material in there, I felt. What did you do the day that you took that picture by the beach? Did your husbands get along? So, so to, to work on the development and tell us, go through that extra depth that you're not telling us already. My biggest commendation, I felt, was the, the best moment was when she actually described Misako as an act of God, a natural disaster with a happy ending, a hurricane which pulled the front door open and then whirled down the steps and encompassed your whole being. That was beautifully described and wonderfully touching. In conclusion, Trisha set the scene well. She described the meeting uh, with Misako with great hand gestures and tone of voice. Uh, she, I would recommend that she start with the hands from the face and develop a story, the story a little bit deeper. The best part, 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 the best part about it was the hurricane that took them off into the sunset. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Our next evaluator for today is Zhao Wen, and he is evaluating Yuki. Please help me welcome Zhao Wen. Zhao. Uh, hello. Thank you, Joseph Master. Uh, today, uh, Yuki, I think you have done a very good job to select this topic. The way how you deliver the speech and the topics you are sharing matches the objective of CCC uh, nearly perfect. So uh, the verbal uh, variety, verbal variety, and I can see that you have prepared the topic well enough. Your voice is natural and uh, friendly. I can feel you are very confident on what you are talking. And more importantly, uh, I like the piece and the thoughts you have made to uh, help the audience to focus and uh, to understand your point. From my point of view, it's very easy to follow you up. Yeah, that is the two reasons uh, why I like your uh, sharing and speech. Although you say you are nervous, but from my view, I think you are very confident and friendly. Mm. And as a speaker, uh, the voice is a very important tool because it is the medium of the message and it is a linkage between audience and the speaker. So in this way, I think you have done it very well. If you, uh, if you want me to give you some suggestions, I want to say that uh, you have spent a lot of, uh, you have spent some time on the uh, pianos, on the, uh, on the, uh, I remember the violins. You have uh, played it, many, uh, you have played some music for us. I, I want to say that I enjoy this part well, um, but, uh, uh, because I know I don't know much about the uh, museum instrument. As an audience, mm, it cannot help me uh, to better uh, to better understand your point that uh, not great, uh, but not perfect, but great. Because from my perspective, the music is, is almost uh, uh, is almost perfect. So uh, generally speaking, uh, my suggestion is that uh, try to think more from the shoes in on the shoes of the audience and to uh, help you better, uh, to, uh, to, better uh, to better support the point you want to deliver. But uh, besides the objective of CC6, I like the structure of your speech a lot because uh, you have a very strong starting. You have strong starting with two questions and a very great, great song. It helps you to attract the attention of the audience. And in the, in the mid part, you have put three, uh, you use three instruments to help you to uh, enforce what you want to talk. And at the conclusion, you make it, at the con at conclusion, you have, um, you have, uh, you, you make the, you make the speech uh, in a higher level to say that although it is not perfect from the single, uh, from this as a single, uh, instrument, but if we work together, we can do better and make it perfect. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Mr. Master. Thank you. And our next evaluator is going to be Yumi evaluating Sunny. Please help me welcome Yumi. Um, um, Sunny, um, congratulations for completing your speech. Um, I just thought 
you have to prepare this speech especially for me because I'm the one who will become nervous when um, making speeches in public. Um, I think any speech was very informative, entertaining, using videos and um, panel games, and very relevant to all of those master members here. And by hearing her story, we could um, visual, visualize the moment when we are filled with nervousness and um, nervousness and filled with fearness. I think her facial express, expression was great. Voice was clear all the time. Her voice was um, mild and easy to listen. And we could see how she beat her nervousness by making smiling in public. And how can she improve? It's very difficult to find one. But one thing I would say is if she could pause more at the end, her conclusion could be stronger finish. And I know the red light was on and should be worried to run out of time. But making pause more at the end would be more gripping ending. Otherwise, it was very impressive. The speech was um, perfect, I think. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And at this point, we're going to ask for the Looks like my connection is unstable. Aaron, could you ask for the evaluators or the roles, the reports, please? Sure, no worries. Uh, so first of all is that now is the time for the facilitators report on our meetings and to regulate our meetings performance. The first person that starts off with will be our ad counter, Hito from Diversity Toastmasters. So let's welcome him up the stage. Thank you. Uh, um, I will report uh, a number of uh, pillar words uh, in the home, uh, speaker session. Uh, uh, speaker uh, Yolanda uh, three times and in table topic session Osmasa Takako six Six R uh, R uh, and girl three times R uh, and Megumi sa Megumi seven R uh, six U and evaluation session don't. Don Norisa, four R, and Roni, eight R, and Yumi, two R. That's all. Thank you very much on that. Give a round of applause. And next, I would like to welcome our. Let me see. Where, where is, where's our grammar? Okay, <laughs> let's welcome uh, yeah. our grammar Yukimasa. To... Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for introducing. And then I could pick up some of the good phrases from the older meetings. For example, uh, compassion, paraphrase, listen first, and found the voice, reciprocated, engulf as the verb, and surplus as the verb, Maestro and amend, crack me up, lighten, vacuum up, hurricane, and force relevant. I think these words can be used in the, the, the other speeches or the evaluation. It's very good usage of the English. And also, I would like to pick the one great phrase from the entire meetings, which is confidence breeds competence is really encouraging and also from the word of the day today thank you for using 
and but so far I couldn't pick you, but the Doug used once and David used once and Cheryl, you used in chat. Thank you very much for using. And sorry for if I couldn't pick uh, your usage, but thank you very much for using. Thank you. And the round of to you, Kamasa. That's our grammarian. Next, I will do the most disgraceful act in the whole history of Toastmaster by welcoming myself as the body language monitor. So I'll just explain myself a bit on that. Uh, so body language monitor. So first of all, if you click on the get a review right now in front of all the screens, is there anyone that you think that stands up so greatly that you want to comment on? There are two persons that actually really stand out in terms of usage of tech stuff. First of all is our lovely Sunny. If you can look at our Sunny, she is beautiful. Yeah, I'm actually zooming you oh, randomly on the green screen. Sorry. Are you eating? No worries. It's the point oh whereby goodness, you can someone. see that she's actually perfectly on the screen. Just imagine that you're watching a news, pay, a news reporter, a news anchor, and she's like, I am on Toastmaster News broadcast. And you can see her lovely smiles. She's well positioned. Eye contact is definitely vertical, uh, horizontally onto the um, onto the camera itself. And most importantly, she is positioned more than at least fifty percent of the whole screen, so we can see her most of the time. And that was one of the nicest demonstration we have ever seen for uh, for the uh, display itself. Next, I would like to feature Cheryl. You can see for Cheryl, uh, it's, it's a nice, lovely background. Moreover, although that's slightly blurry on the background itself, I would highly recommend the first thing is put a better picture. Just kidding. Put, put a higher quality picture that we'll actually put on there. And she's uh, very presentable. Her hand gestures, she can actually simply just raise it up high and then basically interact with the audience. Great positioning by Cheryl. If I want to point out on some of the challenges among all our members itself, the first person I would like to point out would be Dawn. She wouldn't be expected to be. You can see Dawn is actually positioned very well in that in the screen itself, there's nice background uh, with, with some wordings at the side. The, the only challenge for Dawn itself is that if you notice her glasses itself, there, there some, some, of, some of the times when I was listening to her speech itself, there are some lights reflecting off her glasses. So that will be some distractions whereby if we are looking at her in terms of eye contact, I cannot see her eyes. But most of the time it's really good. I mean, in terms of positioning, in terms of light contrast, it's a nice demonstration. I would also love to point out one of our, the next person I would like to talk about is actually Lisa. And Lisa was wondering if she was walking. And she's busy walking around. <laughs> and, yes. <laughs> and this is one of the ways whereby in terms of coordination and looking at the camera itself, I know that she's walking, her, her, her phone is actually at her hand. Like she's holding the phone like this and walking like that. So, and that will be a nice demonstration about how to be very adaptive to the environment. And I still see that her face actually covers more than 50%. Great positioning. The only challenge for Lisa is that Sometimes, uh, if you actually want to bring in the connections and still listen in, look at us like this right now, like this. And that will actually keep on the momentum of the one language. <laughs> Most of the other people who have done the presentation, I really love uh, the prompt between, like, there's, there's only two challenges for two people. One of them is actually me, myself, and David. So what is wrong with both of us is that you can see the contrast. Thank you, Doc. I'll, I'll wrap it up with 10 seconds, is that our camera is a bit blurry. So for me, I have to wash away my camera. Uh, for David, uh, it would be better if you actually put a nice camera light to shine on you so that I can see you more clearly on the screen. Oh no, that's my report. And I'll shake my hands back to the, to the MC. So next person I would like to bring up to the stage is our chat monitor. Is our chat monitor still there? Yay. I'm not sure if you can hear. Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, to be honest, it's, uh, this is the first time I do the chat monitor and I realize that my role is to support the uh, Toastmasters of the day uh, for the chat here. Uh, 
I think uh, everybody do a good job uh, in uh, putting some encouraging, uh, encourage words for people. I feel so uh, delighted to see that. <laughs> I'm not sure if anything else that I should do for this class. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, go around plus uh, chat monitor. And finally, it's our general evaluator who is actually writing and tirelessly commenting at our behind behind us and giving us very fair evaluations. So please be harsh on me. I know I didn't do a good job. I'm worried. I'm still worried very quickly. <clears throat> so I pass the general evaluation stage to Cheryl first to lead on the general evaluation. Okay, I'm not quite sure how we're doing this since we're not on the agenda anymore. Did you notice that? At any rate, we are asking for the four evaluators to first evaluate the speech evaluators. And if I use the word evaluation too much, please forgive me. I'm going to follow what I have in front of me for the agenda. So Justin, I believe you were evaluating what turned out to be Dawn with her speech evaluation. Justin, may I call you up to the virtual lectern, please? Sure, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here, and it's an honor to evaluate Don. Don, I will evaluate your evaluation and also comment on opening and the timer. Don, thank you so much for evaluating Yolanda from my club. Your evaluation was very professional and helpful. You encouraged Yolanda by listing things she's done nicely. And you also challenged her to help her improve. There was a detail. You mentioned that when Yolanda spoke, there was background noise. Firstly, you thought it could be distracting, and then you decided that this should be treated as a nice challenge. I feel your kindness and the evaluation skill. You are really an after fox success coach and the toastmaster. Regarding round robin, it was fun. The purpose was kind of kind of like one minute silence, which was also invite a wider feedback to the speaker and encourage more people to do informal evaluation. Due to the time, today's round robin was too short, but still very helpful. I also love the opening. Opening is always short and essential. It is like the first impression Having you do the opening was a very good choice. You set the tone, warm and calm, perfectly matched to this theme, friendship. Nice job, great job, Don. Don, time management is so important to any meeting. At the time, Dog didn't say much, but whenever we needed him, no matter during the speeches, or other sessions. He's always there using the three lights to help us control the process. One thing we should also notice is Dong introduced the time rules and asked us to monitor his screen, which was very caring and useful. By the way, I love your time management machine. It was so magic and simple. Dog, if you'd like me to challenge you, I'd say you can consider being tougher on time management because you can see we are behind the schedule. Overall, wonderful job, Dog. Now I'm back to you, Sure. Hey, thank you, Justin. Our next general evaluator who also has three tasks is Naoki, who will be evaluating Nick's speech evaluation, as well as a couple of other roles. Are you ready, Naoki? Yes, I'm ready. All right, go ahead. <laughs> uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, Toastmaster Nick, thank you very much for your wonderful evaluation. It was very educational. At first, I'd like to talk about three commendations about his evaluation. Firstly, he started his evaluation with questions based on the objectives. So it was a nice start and you engaged the audience successfully. And secondly, he used body language 
and the vocal variety very effectively. For example, uh, flying and the driving. So we have some limitation due to the online meeting, but uh, you used uh, body language very effectively. Lastly, the structure of the evaluation was very nice. Uh, you, you used sandwich approach and a specific suggestion. And uh, due to the time constraint, so we sometimes skip the summary, but in conclusion, he summarized his points uh, very well. Uh, it, was the, it was very nice evaluation. And uh, I couldn't find any suggestions, but I learned a lot from you. In summary, you started with questions and engaged the audience. Secondly, the effective body language. And lastly, the structure of the evaluation was very nice. Thank you so much. And then I'd like to talk about body language master, body language monitor. So it was new to me for, to know. And uh, Toastmaster Aaron successfully done, has done this job. And I was interested in how to share the back screen like uh, Toastmaster Sunny and Toastmaster Sherry. And this role can improve the quality of the meeting in online. And uh, one suggestion, I think Toastmaster Nick used body language very successfully and uh, Toastmaster Alon could make some comments with body language because not only positioning and uh, back screen, you can also talk about the body language itself. And Toastmaster Lan Sang Lang did the chat monitor for the first time and uh, there is no such a role in a club, but uh, I'd like to consider to use utilize this new uh, new roles to improve the quality of the meeting of Diversity Toastmasters Club. Thank you very much. Thank you, Naoki. <sighs> we had marathon table topics, now it's marathon evaluation. Because I am doing two roles, I am going to do Lori's evaluations as well as mine, and you're all going to be tired of me. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> I've mixed them all up, so I've just titled them. So, Zha uh, Wen for Yuki. I don't know what I'm ordered I'm doing this in. What I thought about this evaluation personally was that it was a well-organized speech in itself. And that is how an evaluation should go, an opening a body and a close, and Zhao Yu had that very well done. You found a large number of praise points for speaking techniques from vocal variety through to the organization. I was quite amazed how you managed to do that and keep within your time. You'll notice that she used also the sandwich method with praise points, a grow point in the middle, and then even more praise points. And I didn't think she'd have any left, but she did. Mm -hmm. I have only one little grow point, one little suggestion, and it's a, a wording, because words are powerful, of course. Instead of saying, but, when you're doing an evaluation and about to give a challenge point, try however, or another kind of positive transition word. It's very difficult to do when we're talking almost off the cuff, but I think you can do it. Now, Yumi evaluated Sunny, I, Sunny, I think, and I believe I heard you say this was new for you, that you hadn't done evaluations. Well, my only grow point for you is to be more confident because you did an excellent job. I noticed that you personalized yours, saying how Sonny's speech went to you personally and gave you something to, to hang a hook on or to take home with you. You also used the sandwich method with a lot of grow points, and there were a lot. I know you couldn't even possibly give them all for Sonny because there are so many, and had a grow point for her about her ending. So I thought you did a great job evaluating a, a very experienced Toastmaster. Now I've also been evaluating several people with roles. For Lori, she sent me an evaluation for Toastmaster Aaron. 
as well as her speech evaluation. She found you very welcoming and friendly and had energetic introductions going on. Your, her suggestion for improvement from you really belongs to the body monitor that she thought you moved your hands in front of your face and wanted you to watch that. We also found Dawn welcoming and organized. Now I added this evaluation. I thought Dawn's part was incredibly succinct and stated very, in a very short period of time so that she really kept her eye on the time. Both of you put a concerted effort into planning this meeting and it showed. My one girl point for Toastmasters in a thing like this is to watch that time. Both of you in the planning and then in the execution because perhaps our table topics could have been cut off sooner and I'm so glad the timer came in and said something. I have feedback for the grammarian as well. Yukimasa explained the role very well uh, Lori's suggestion for improvement is to consider putting the definition on the screen as well as the word. If you had a PowerPoint slide prepared ahead of time or a document prepared ahead of time, you could put it on the screen and have the whole thing ready to go rather than typing it in. I like that you highlighted your favorite phrase at the end that you took from Sunny's presentation. That was very well done. Now our table topics master was when I was to evaluate, David Chen. You did a great job explaining the guidelines for the timing. I thought you were well prepared with 15 numbered questions, even though we didn't get to use them all. Uh, Girl point for you is that you keep an eye on the participants and try to get people who don't have speaking roles, no matter what Aaron tells you. <laughs> Clearly I had a lot to say already. <laughs> So that's just any table topic session. It's a good idea to try and bring in people who don't otherwise have a chance to speak. I very much appreciated the 20 second preparation time, although I think most of us didn't take advantage of it. It's a great idea, Wow, though, because in a brick and mortar club, you have that time where you walk up to the front before you speak, and we don't have that here. And my last point of evaluation is a comment for our awe counter. Clearly, Hideo, you were listening very well. You gave great examples of great phrases and had specific numbers of all those filler words, a challenge with this many people. That, I think, now concludes the entire general evaluation. So I think I'm turning it back to Aaron. I'm confused with two Toastmasters this day. Thank you very much on that. So... Yeah, the I I don't want to defend myself, but I know I I I <laughs> will do very well. So thank you for everyone for coming by to this lovely meeting, and then now is the time whereby actually everyone can get to vote for their best participants for today. So uh, I will launch the poll. Wait, before that, I have to remove all the co-hosts. I apologize for that. Okay, nearly done. Okay, so I will launch the poll. So feel free to vote for your best speaker, best table topics, and also the best evaluator. If it's not there, yeah, I didn't put the best evaluator, but yeah. Two who voted already. Aaron, there's no vote for best evaluator. Yep, I, I noticed uh, ah. the because I have some surprises. Okay, all right. I, I think everybody was good.
I think we probably have to move along. It's already 11 tw or 20 past the hour here. Okay. So I'll, I'll speed up and say that the best evaluator for a hits up is actually every single one of you here. Remember all those chat conversations that you have actually put in the chat box? Those are really, really great evaluations. And I believe that each evaluation is actually to the heart and so and it definitely helps every speaker to grow. So everyone give a round of applause for yourself that you warn yourself the best evaluator for the day or best evaluators. And now I will stop the poll. One, two, and three. So everyone can actually see the results for the poll today. Our best speaker, drum rolls, goes to Sunny. Give a round of applause to Sunny. Yay. Any any words for uh, on on today's speech, Sunny? Yeah, I I love presenting uh, Toastmasters speeches about beating fear, and I just uh, thank you all for recognizing it. I also enjoyed the other speeches as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next we have the best table topic speaker. The best table topic speaker goes to our guest Lin. Yay! Wow, <laughs> it's a surprising to me. Thank you so much to my dear friends to, um, to uh, like my speech and it's really to be yourself. And I like this kind of meeting very much and I'm doing a lot for all the speakers from today's joint meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And the best club performance goes to Advanced Test Masters, because the, the reason why I actually started the last poll is other than knowing about your club is getting your club featured and you guys get the most votes today. So as the president, do you have anything to say? <laughs> yay! I'd say yay! And, and thank you everyone for participating. And if anyone is awake in the middle of the night <laughs> and would like to come and visit our Wednesday meetings, we do meet at Wednesday. I think it's at 1255 for those of you in China and Hong Kong that is a.m. in the morning and uh, we are we meet at 1155 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and we would love to have anyone come and visit us and thanks so much for everything Aaron thank you back to you thank you very much and finally I would like to give some certificate of appreciation to all the clubs that have been here remember now is the time that you can do print screen because you have nothing in your head right now so a uh, special thanks to Jing uh, to help me to make this certificate of appreciation so I'll share my screen Ta -da. So first of all, it goes to Advanced Test Master for supporting. So basically, you see our names all there. So print screen, and you can feature it in your club. To get our plus to Advanced Test Masters. Tell me when you have done print screening. <laughs> done? Give me a thumbs up. I didn't see anyone there, but yeah. OK, thank you. Next is Go Beyond. Justin, are you still there? I hope he is. Or, or David. David, you can actually print screen for them as well. Uh, it's so bad to... Yeah. And Go Beyond. The next club that I would like to appreciate would be Diversity. So feel free to print screen as well. And finally, to our compare communicators, because I don't have hands, uh, any one of you guys can help me to pre-screen. <laughs> Yay. So finally, I would like to say special thanks to some really, really important people in this, uh, in this meeting. First of all, special thanks to Dahl, our timer. Give a round of applause to Dahl, because he has been doing actively on giving us the nice vibe that timer can be played very differently. Whenever we see his face, we see the smiley face that suddenly pop up with uh, raised eyeballs or something like that. It raised eyebrows. And that was really humorous too. The second person I would like to say thanks to is to David for being a table topic master. 
Give our applause to David. The reason why I just thank him because he has to think about 14 different questions, which are more than most of the marathons that you have been to. And that is really, really amazing job. So give our applause to David again. Next person I'd like to thank is all the presents, Justin, Don, Yukimasa, uh, so Naoki is actually representing him now because he's a VP. And uh, thank you myself for making this club meeting a success. Uh, we need to improve, obviously, and please give us some feedback um, after the meeting and stuff so that we can just try to make sure it's fine to next time. I learn from my mistakes and we make it better because this is not going to be only one time off. It's going to be ongoing for different times so that we can connect with different clubs around the world along with online clubs. But this is the start. So if we can start off with this step, we are sure that there are more steps ongoing. So now is the time I will actually put the gavel down as the meeting adjourned. So please feel free to stay behind. There's actually one more event after this. I will stop the video recording first.